going on, Frag Fam? I'm Joshua, and this is our channel, Sense Sense. To all the loyal subscribers who have shown back up because I've been gone for quite some time, guys, thank you so much. Hope you've had a great holidays, and hope you've tackled 2019 in the best way possible so far, and you've got goals to come. For all you new people, guys, welcome aboard. I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. It's not like I'm, you know, trying to invite you into R. Kelly's house with some candy. Today we'll be talking about my top 10 fragrances that I've worn so far in winter and I will continue to wear until winter comes to a close. Granted, I don't think these are the best 10 winter fragrances. I've got other designer fragrances that I might choose over them if you twisted my arm and made me make that decision. But when it comes to this winter, these are the 10 fragrances that I have been wearing and I will continue to wear to decide if I wanna keep them or roll them out the door. Starting the list is a designer fragrance from my favorite designer house and that is Versace. It's a fragrance that's often frowned upon, but when it comes to its application and the reason why I wear it, that's why I love it. At number 10, guys, Versace's Eros. Versace's Eros is perfect for the cold weather and when you're out and about and you need to cut through cold weather and other people's fragrances. It's a loud designer mint fragrance. It's exactly what it is. It gets hated upon for what it is, but at the end of the day, it does exactly what it sets out to be. It's people pleasing. And when it comes to people who aren't, you know, fragrance aficionados, they just, they just really like the way this stuff smells. Uh, this is actually my second bottle. I had a 100 milliliter bottle, got down to about 20 milliliters and shot it out the door because I just got tired of it, but it's right back here. Just decided to be smarter like my good friend Bradley tells me. 50 milliliters, guys. Do it. You have too many bottles. Go small. Coming in at number nine, guys, is a fragrance that I wear on date nights. It's one of my wife's favorite fragrances, but being that we have a newborn baby, which is the reason why I haven't been making any videos, I haven't had a lot of chance to wear this, but when I do get to wear it, I love it. The fragrance we're talking about is Dolce & Gabbana's The One. Dolce & Gabbana's The One is a smooth, seductive, classy, slightly sweet fragrance. It works perfectly for what it's trying to accomplish. The only knock I have on this, guys, when it comes to date night, is that it shows up well, but it leaves just as quick as it showed up. You gotta reapply. So if you're into having decants in your pockets and that's not a big deal for you, this one will work. But if you're one of those guys who just grabs and sprays and walks out the door, Keep walking, you don't want this one. Coming in at number eight is a fragrance that is often looked at as the best flanker from the line. It is often looked at the only one worth having, even though Lucky just joined that crew of fragrances from the one million line that are worth having. The one that I'll be wearing this winter, I'm sure you've guessed it by now, is One Million's Preve. As you can see, I've worn a pretty good bit of this. It's a really small bottle, but at the end of the day, I mean, I don't need more than 50 mils, guys. I mean, I own over 100 bottles. I'm never gonna empty any of these bottles. What I use this for is the same thing I'll use the one for. Maybe we're gonna be away from home for a longer period of time, and maybe we've gotten lucky enough to have more than a couple hours from the kids. Highly unlikely. But if that happens, I'll reach for one million Preve. It's, it's a darker, denser, sweeter version of the one, in my opinion, for what it does and uh, I definitely really like this one. It's, it's classy, especially something coming from Paco Rabanne, but it's people pleasing, people like it. Guys, the one prevails. Coming in at number seven is the more classy, more adult-like, more grown-up approach to Coach. That would be Coach Platinum. Coach Platinum feels like if you were in your mid-20s and rock coach, and you felt like you, you know, you hit this moment in your life when you're in your early 30s, and you're like, man, I've got to smell more like a man should smell in the office. Um, this is what I think you would get. Uh, I think this one is much better than the previous aforementioned Coach for men. It's got a little more of a powdery vibe to it, but it lasts a whole lot longer. It projects better, and I just really, really like it. And it's kind of a, a neat bottle, guys. Coming in at number seven, that is. Coach for Men Platinum. Coming in at number six is an often overlooked fragrance. It wasn't always the most hyped fragrance. I love it. I think the bottle's slightly tacky. I've actually chipped the bottle, if you can see. I really like it, and of course you've seen it by now. That's Givenchy's Play Intense. This is, you, you hear that? Play Intense is a sweet, coffee, 
Tonka gourmandish fragrance and it works really, really well. It works perfect in winter. I feel like it comes more alive in the cold winter air. This is a really good one. You should definitely check it out if you haven't checked it out. It's probably something you haven't heard a lot about in these YouTube videos or maybe a lot of people don't talk about it. You probably can't even find it in your local store so you probably have to buy it on the gray web. But guys, this right here is a really, really cool fragrance. Check it out, guys. That's Givenchy's Play Intense. Coming in at number five is a fragrance in South Louisiana that's often looked at as kind of femme. I'm secure myself. My wife likes it. I love it. I think it's a great, great fragrance, and I think women can wear it too. It's something that I wouldn't mind spraying on her and me when we walk out the door. I, I, might, I might try that. Coming in at number five from the house of Tom Ford is Noir Extreme. Noir Extreme is a very unique fragrance. There's really nothing else like it on the market. Do not wear this if you're not comfortable with yourself and you care a whole lot about what some people may say. This is not a fragrance you're gonna wanna wear around guys who are talking about tossing around the pigskin and if the Cowboys are gonna win and how the Saints are gonna win the Super Bowl. That's not, this is not what you wanna wear. This is something you wanna wear around a different type of people, people who may be a little more artsy, people who may be a little more refined in their taste of certain things, especially fragrances. If you're around those kinds of people, or you by yourself and you're doing it for you, fantastic. Or if you really don't care, like myself, just rock it. Coming in at numero cuatro is a fragrance from the house of YSL. As you can see from me spinning the top, it is a Loam Line fragrance. This one is Loam Altine. Loam Altine is a fragrance that has a fantastic wearable rose note. A lot of people, especially guys, kind of shy away from the rose note, but this is rose done fresh. Uh, a lot of people won't have this on their winter list, but I find that it smells really pleasant in cold, crisp air, and it also works really good in an air-controlled environment. I'm sure the majority of the people watching this video work in an air-controlled environment or will be in an air-controlled environment at some point in the week. So guys, if you want to get past the fact that it doesn't have like a crap ton of woods and smoky notes, then I think you'll enjoy it and you should try it. And the fragrance we're talking about again is Loam's Altine. This tea tiny bottle, which continues my little trend of 50 milliliter bottles, it is a bottle of Allure Ohm Sports O Extreme from the house of Chanel. This is Tonka Done Fresh. I get a lot of the same vibes that I get from Eros, just without the mint, without that strong, heavy, piercing mint. It almost feels like Versace opened this up, smelled it, and was like, man, let's just throw a crap ton of mint on top and we'll call it Eros. It's kind of the vibe I get. The reason that this is on this list at number three is because if I can't figure out what I wanna wear for the week, I grab this boy, I spray it on, and I walk out the door. This one works, it lasts, it's high quality, it's a fantastic fragrance. It's often over-talked, but I like it. Alorum Sport O Extreme. Coming in at number two is one of the most overlooked fragrances from the house, especially from the Terra Mugler line. It's my favorite one from the Amen line. No, not Tonka. No, it's not. Ultra Zest, no, it's not pure Havan, it's not malt, it's Crypto Mint. Crypto Mint is what I wear when I maybe wanna wear Eros, but I don't wanna smell like I'm going out to a nightclub. This is something that I'll wear to the office. This is something that so easily feels like it floats through the winter breeze, and you will ultimately smell unique. Coming in at number two is Crypto Mint. Number one fragrance that I have worn this winter and will continue to wear this winter comes from the suggestion of my buddy Derek Ford over at Scent Gents. They've got a radio show, you should check them out. I'll leave a link below. It's a fragrance that he often, often hypes. Some say overhypes. It's the only fragrance on this list that is also from a house that has already been listed. And the fragrance we're talking about is Tom Ford's Ombre Leather. Tom Ford's Ombre Leather is exactly what it sounds like. Leather, 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 leather. Imagine your friend calls you and says, yo bro, just got a new Beamer, swinging by your place, come check it out. He drives up, it's all blacked out, you get inside, it's got black leather, you take a deep breath as you sit down on the seat and the air just puffs out of the seat and you smell it in the air. This is what you're gonna get. This is probably one of the best from the line. The only one that I like better than this one is the one that's better than this one and that is Tuscan Leather. If you don't agree, I will fight you with swords. Okay, I, I don't know how to use a sword. 
but I will have a severely strong disagreement with you. So finishing off the list at number one is Tom Ford's Ombre Leather. So as I stated before, guys, these are 10 fragrances that I'm choosing to be my most worn for the winter. It is not my favorite fragrances of all time. These are not the most complimented fragrances of all time. These are just fragrances that I will be wearing this winter, and maybe you haven't heard about them, and maybe you now want to go check them out, and maybe you should. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you continue to come by, and I hope you continue to smell good. This is the point of the video where I would normally tell you all that fancy stuff about liking, commenting, and subscribing, but at the end of the day, I'm sure you're sick of it. In 2019, it's not gonna happen. So if you wanna do all that fancy stuff, go ahead, I appreciate it. If you don't, I'm gonna keep making videos anyway. Don't forget, guys, I'll smell you later. Peace!